Hey YouTube. So today, we're going to be sharpening up my Annihilator Broadhead. We've been doing some ballistic testing lately with all sorts of different broadheads, and the nice thing about the Annihilators is that they are reusable. However, you can kind of see here we have a bit of a glint, and in person it's, it's a little bit more extreme. It's much more of a um, sort of a chip. You can kind of get your fingernail in there and really work it out. Um, yeah, this isn't, uh, this isn't horrifically bad. I, I would still say that if you keep the rest of the blade sharp, that it would pass through, you know, a deer or a hog just fine. However, we are here and, uh, why not go ahead and get it sharpened up and ready for the season? So, Annihilator has done their own video on how to sharpen their broadheads. So that's not what this video is about. Just wanted to show you guys how it kind of goes in uh, in practice. And we're going to start with a coarse um, top. And we're just going to... The Annihilator, uh, each blade is off at a 30 degree angle. So if you just hold it down and you slide it backwards, you are sharpening the blade. So it's very... Um, kind of convenient in that sense that you don't have to have any sort of particular angle or um, pressure it, it can be sharpened on its own so we're going to do that and uh, I'm going to shut up now and we'll kind of speed up the video and go through the process and then we'll kind of work our way down on uh, grain <laughs> And you see, we can already start to see it's already getting a little bit more clean um, around where that glint is. And this coarse uh, stone really works that material off quickly. You have to be careful with it because you can hog off too much material. Um, but it's, a, uh, it's an effective way to get that dent out of there. And then the reason that we're kind of going um, away from the tip is because we don't want to roll over our point there. That point is very, 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 very sharp, um, which is nice because that's the first thing that makes contact. It starts your cut, um, and we don't want that to roll over. So we go from the front to the back. And you can see in the video, I'm already having to have grip here at the thread and then at the top blade because it's moist. We keep the uh, stone wet to uh, help with um, not burning out the metal. We're gonna do a little bit more of that and uh, then we're gonna move on to some uh, more, more uh, fine grain. All right, now it's not looking like we have much of a glint there anymore. Um, that's just about worked out. I would say there's still a little bit left there. You know, we're going to hit a little bit more. We're going to hit with maybe five more passes on this and then like that. So see what we get from that. Hey, right, we're looking pretty good there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on to a, a finer grain um, on the stone. Now, the reason we're using this one and not my usual uh, flat stones is because this I actually just picked up from Walmart, but it has that coarse grain to it. Um, these broadheads, they kind of dig, because it's not an even blade all the way across and you're passing like that, they kind of dig channels over time, and that makes an uneven surface. And you want to use stones like this that have a very even surface for uh, your like longer actual knife blades. That's our medium. Pause to let the stone soak for a second. We don't uh, we don't worry too much about the water splashing over here on the table. Um, and we're gonna get started. Now 
This part has kind of come off the glue's unadhesed. That's what happens when it soaks in water for too long, is eventually that glue will give out and your stones will kind of fall apart. It doesn't remove the ability to use the machine because it'll keep it level um, after you put it back on there. But it just does uh, make, you know, the whole operation a little bit more complicated. And you can tell just off of that, you know, transitioning from that very, uh, you know, coarse one to the medium, how much smoother of a work that is. This coarse one really is only for hogging off material. You're not going to put an edge on there with that, but that medium one starts to get you closer to your edge. And then this fine one's really just for finishing and polishing. Big old pool of water right there. Kind of expected that. We're gonna let these stones go back in the water. We're gonna move this plastic holder out of the way. And we're gonna drive the table. Good shot town there to anybody. All right, now we're gonna use this heavier lever, leather, sorry, can't speak today. Um, put a little bit of polish clay on there. And that's all that is really, it's just a clay that came with uh, my sharpening kit that uh, does a great job of polishing up the blade, working out the burrs, and kind of just doing a finishing edge on there. So anything that you might have kicked up, any metal material or anything like that, this is going to clean all that off now. And that's really what puts the final like edge edge on your blade. And what I'm kind of doing now is just cleaning up that actual like edge. Get all the excess clay off there. And I'm not digging the blade into that, if you notice. Um, I'm just kind of running parallel to the edge and letting it clean itself up. This piece of leather is getting very torn up and blackened with age and everything else. We're going to have to upgrade everything soon and get some new material in the house, but we don't need that quite yet. Now, of course, we have to see if we actually did a decent job at sharpening this. The tip is very sharp. I can't get my fingernail in the chip there anymore. Doesn't have much of a glint. Let's see. This is just a uh, piece of uh, worksman leather. You can kind of see I've done broad testing tests on a bunch of this stuff already, not just on video, but for you guys. Um, but also for myself personally. So let's just see if we can. That does not want to start. You know, hang on. There's a better way to do this. All right, we're back. And we've got the workman leather on top of a piece of cardboard from an optic I bought. I'm not going to really need that top anymore. And we put broadhead on an arrow. So let's see. With a good push, we're going to see if it goes through. Quite a bit of force being applied, and that blew right through. Put a nice little dent in the table, too. Tip is still sharpy, hurdy. Gonna go through leather, no problem. So, hitting the table didn't do us any harm. Edges are all still sharp, and we've got perfect three blade cut right there. No, no side is shorter than the other or less clean. It what you're looking for is like see kind of there. I don't, I don't know if I'm even showing it to the camera right. See right here where you've got a lot of just like fray on the leather. That's more tearing. That's that's it tearing through there, versus here you see how clean that cut is. Everything was sliced, not 
torn. So that's kind of what you're looking for on the leather. So I think it's sharp. I think it's ready to rock for the season. Um, you know, if you're worried about sharpening a blade and you're worried that you might take a little bit of grain weight off of there, um, you're really not going to take a significant enough amount of uh, weight off of that broadhead. Even using the coarse stone like I just was to kind of work out that uh, dent, you're not really taking enough material off there to uh, change the way it's going to fly. I mean, you might be removing half of a grain or something like that, and it's just not going to uh, affect things the way that... Uh, in such a big way that's going to affect your accuracy. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.